Hello, and welcome to the UCLA Biomedical Physics Graduate Program website. My name is Mike McNick Gray, and I'm the director of the graduate program. Biomedical physics is fundamentally an interdisciplinary program, and both our research and curriculum revolve around the interactions between biology and physics. So we are interested in applicants from all scientific backgrounds, including biology, biophysics, physics, chemistry, engineering, just about any kind, mathematics, computer science, and so on. We are part of the graduate program in biosciences at UCLA, and we're both an NIH-supported training program and a CAMPEP accredited graduate program in medical physics. To tell you more about our program, we're developing a series of short videos by our students, both current and past, to explain some of the fundamental ideas of their research. We hope you find these interesting and informative, and if you are interested in applying to our graduate program, please visit our website at www.bmp.ucla.edu for more information. Our contact information is there as well. Thank you. In this video, I'll be talking to you about the therapeutic medical physics track. Uh, first of all, a little bit about me. My name is Dan Nguyen, I have a BS in physics, and I came directly to this program from undergrad, and now I'm doing research uh, in the therapeutic medical physics track. Um, when I first came here, I quickly picked up the concept of dose. Now, dose is defined as the amount of energy absorbed per unit mass, um, or joules per kilogram, also known as gray. Um, dose is caused by ionizing radiation, which is characterized by having enough energy to excite and ionize atoms. A common type of ionizing radiation used for therapy are photons. Photons are produced for radiation therapy by radioactive sources, such as cobalt-60, or by linear accelerators, which accelerates electrons onto a tungsten target to produce the photons. Um, now, linear accelerators are used in external beam radiation therapies, uh, and this involves a patient on a couch, and there's a gantry that houses the linear accelerator to pr produce the photons for treatment. Um, how external beam radiation therapy works, now imagine a tumor in beam's eye view, um, and now we add an organ at risk. Now, now imagine the beam is divided into smaller pixels called beamlets, and, and if we have the ability to choose to turn each, in, each beamlet on or off uh, using multi-leaf collimators, um, we can uh, create a uh, plan that's conformal to the tumor, and this is known as conformal radiation therapy. Um, and in CRT, the intensities of the beamlets are all the same. However, if we allow the beamlets to uh, modulate in, in intensity uh, at any degree, uh, we have a new type of modality called intensity modulated radiation therapy, or IMRT. Um, how IMRT works is that it modulates the intensities of each beam and it uses distinct beam angles to treat the patient. Um, however, if we allow the one beam to stay continuously on while moving in an arc and modulating the intensity, uh, we have a new type of therapy modality called volumetric modulated arc therapy. So while learning about all of these different therapy modalities, I ended up joining the lab group uh, of Qi Sheng, um, where I started to look into uh, another type of therapy modality called 4-pi non-coplanar radiotherapy. How 4-pi non-coplanar works, uh, so clinically, uh, most uh, radiotherapies use coplanar beams uh, for treatment, and every once in a while, the planner will add a type of non-coplanar beam in just to avoid uh, organs at risk. Now the idea behind 4-pi non-coplanar radiotherapy is to automate the entire beam selection sequence of and choosing coplanar and non-coplanar beams altogether. What this means is that we move from a solution space of candidate beams of just a single plane, the coplanar plane, and we move into the entire 4-pi steradian. Uh, this is a much bigger problem to solve, uh, but it gives uh, a better answer since it includes the uh, original solution space. 
So here we have a typical 4-pi plan versus a clinical plan, uh, the VMAP plan. Uh, and as you can see, the 4-pi plan uses um, many more non-coplanar beams, uh, whereas in the VMAP plan, you see it uses one coplanar arc and one non-coplanar arc. Here's the dose wash between a typical VMAP plan and the 4-pi plan. And as you can see here, at about above 30 grays or more, the the dose is much more conformal in the 4-pi plan. So what we have here is a dose volume histogram, or DVH, and how these are read is that it tells you uh, the amount of dose or more that a certain volume of a organ at risk is getting, or a structure is getting. Uh, for example, if we look at the brain contour, um, you can see that 20% uh, of the brain is receiving 30 grays or more of dose. Um, so what we see here uh, is that the planning target volume is receiving uh, more dose, uh, whereas we are sparing more of the organs at risk in the 4-pi plan. So how do we deliver non-coplanar angles? So 4-pi non-coplanar radiotherapy can be implemented with current clinical technology shown here. So what you see is a 4-pi non-coplanar radiotherapy implementation um, of uh, using the variant true beam. Uh, in the left, top left-hand corner, you see a 3D virtual model uh, that is used in creating collision maps as well as uh, optimizing the beam sequence. This beam sequence is converted into XML format, uh, which is then uh, inputted into the true beam developer mode for implementation. So what did we learn about 4-pi non-coplanar radiotherapy? Well, it's a highly conformal radiotherapy, um, and it has significant dose reduction to critical structures, and it's possible to implement with current technology. So that was a little bit about what I do in the therapeutic medical physics track. For more information, please go to the link below. Thanks for watching.